Hey everyone, I hope you had a fabulous weekend. So today we are moving on to multiplying decimals. So you are still not able to use a calculator. You should have your math notebook out and a pencil out and your math book as well because you are going to have some practice problems in your math book. So have all of those things ready for today's lesson. And then here is your warm up to get your brain working. So Lewis and his friends are attending a concert this weekend. If the tickets are $125 a piece and they need to purchase 12 tickets, what is the total cost of the concert tickets? So your job right now is to have your math, math notebook out and you're doing this warm up on your own. So pause the video and when you come back, I will go over it for you. Okay, so hopefully you paused it. So I know that if the tickets are $125 a piece, that means every time you buy a ticket, you're going to spend $125. And since they are buying 12 tickets, you need to multiply. So I'm going to multiply 125 times 12. When you're multiplying double digit numbers, you want to start with the one's place of the bottom number and then multiply it to all of the numbers in the top or all the digits in the top number. So I'm going to start with the 2 and do 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1, 5. 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, so I am done with the 2. When you are done with it, you cross it off. You can also cross off anything that you carried. In order to cross that off, though, you have to remember the thing that everyone always forgets, the placeholder zero, because you now are going to multiply the one times everything, but that's not really a one. It's a 10. So if you, you have to put that placeholder zero once you cross off the two in order to keep going with the next place value. So don't forget that place value holder. Very important. So then we're going to multiply the 1 to all of the digits in the top number. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. And then you just add 0 plus 0 is 0. 5 times 5. Oh, 5 plus 5. Ooh, I'm still multiplying. Is 10. 2 plus 2 is 4. Plus 1 is 5. And then 1. So your answer is, oh, that's a lot of money. So the total cost is $1,500. Holy moly. Hope they have that one kind of money. That's crazy. Um, but so that's a nice little review of multiplying double digit numbers. So now we're actually going to move to decimals. So hopefully you got that correct. So the first example we're going to do together is Delia bought three and eight tenths pounds of peppers. The peppers cost $1.99 per pound. What is the total cost of Delia's peppers? So the $1.99 per pound what that means is that every time you buy a pound of peppers, you pay $1.99. So you buy a pound, you pay $1.99. You buy another pound, you pay $1.99. So if you are buying three and eight tenths pounds, that means you're going to multiply the price per pound times how many pounds that you're going to buy because you're buying multiple pounds. So when you're setting up the multiplication problem, I suggest you put the longer number on top. Not necessarily the larger number, because if you're looking at 3.8 and $1.99, 3.8 is larger, but I want the longer or the more digits on the top. So I'm going to put the $1.99 on top, and then I'm going to put the 3.8 on the bottom. So right now you should notice something really important that I did not do. I did not line up my decimals like you do when you're adding and subtracting. You do not line up decimals when multiplying. If you want to write yourself a little note, 
hopefully yours looks better than mine, but you do not line up your decimals when you're multiplying, and that is because we're actually going to take them out. So I always like do a little noise when I'm doing it because I like to add sound effects to my life. So I'm going to take the decimals out of both numbers, and I'm going to let me change to a color you can actually see. I'm going to write how many times I took it out. So I'm going to take it to the right and go whoop, whoop, took it out twice, whoop, took it out once. And then I'm going to add how many times I took it out. So 2 plus 1 is 3. That's super important to write that because you're going to need to put that decimal back in at the end. And I'll show you that at the end. So I write this just so I don't forget. It's like a little reminder, or a little sticky note, like, hey, don't forget me. So now that we took those decimals out, we're going to go and we're going to just multiply like normal, pretending those decimals aren't there. So we're going to start with the 8, and we're going to multiply it to all of the digits up top. So 8 times 9, 72. 8 times 9, 72. But add the 7, 79. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 7 is 15. Okay, so now we're done with the 8, so we're going to cross it off. But in order for me to do that, I have to bring down my placeholder zero. Cross off everything I carried. So now I'm going to take the three and multiply it by each of the digits in the top number. Three times nine, 27. Three times nine, 27. 28, 29. Three times one, three plus two is five. Okay, now you add 2 plus 0, 2, 9 plus 7 is 16, 9 plus 5 is 14, plus 1 is 15, 5 plus 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So now this 3 that we have up here is how we're going to put our decimal back into our answer. So because you're, if you think about this, $2 per pound, you're buying about 4 pounds, $2 times 4 pounds, it should be roughly around $8. So $7,562 for peppers is crazy. So we do want to add our decimal place back in, and we're going to put it in three times. So you want to start all the way at the end on the right and put it in one, two, three places. So your answer should be 7 and 562 thousandths. But look back at your problem. What was the total cost of Delia's peppers? So we're talking about money here. So when we're talking about money, you got to think about how many decimal places money has. And it's actually two. So you want to look at the second decimal place or the hundredths. And the two is going to tell you how to round. Two just says stay the same. So your answer is actually... $7.56 for the peppers. Okay. So we're going to do two more together. If at this point you feel confident and you want to try them on your own, feel free. Pause the video, try it on your own, and then you can come back and watch us go through it. If you're still feeling a little shaky and you want to do it with me or watch me do it, please do. Don't forget to write down the notes, though. So you do it any way that you want to do it, whether you do it as I'm doing the problem or you pause it after and you write them down after. It does not matter however you want to do it. So it says that blades of grass grow 3 and 75 hundredth inches per month. If the grass continues to grow at this rate, how much will the grass grow in six and 25 hundredth months? So it grows this much per month, and we want to know how much it grows after like six and a quarter months. So 3.75 the first month, 3.75 the next month. So this is telling me to multiply because it's something I want to know something that's happening multiple times. So I'm going to multiply and notice they each have three digits, so it does not matter which one goes on top. So I'm going to put 6.25 on top 
and then multiply that by 3.75. So if you remember, you're just going to take the decimals out. So take it out once, twice. Whoop, whoop. Take it out twice. 2 plus 2 is 4. So that's going to tell us how many times we add it back in at the end. And so now we have to multiply. So starting with the 5 and the 3.75. So 5 times 5 is 25, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12, 5 times 6 is 30, plus 1 is 31. So I am done with the 5, we're going to cross it off, cross off the carries and add our placeholder 0. Now we can multiply the 7, 7 times 5, 35. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 3, 17. 7 times 6 is 42, plus 1 is 43. Okay, so we are done with the 7. So we're going to cross off the 7. Cross off everything that we carried. So in order, notice that once we cross off the 7, we don't just do one placeholder 0, but we're going to cross off, or we're going to add 2. Two things are crossed off, we add two zeros, okay? So it should match. So now we can go and multiply. 3 times 5, 15. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 3 times 6 is 18. And now we just add. 5 plus 0 plus 0 is 5. 2 plus 5 plus 0 is 7. 1 plus 7 is 8. Plus 5 is 13. 1 plus 3 is 4. Plus another 3 is 7. Plus another 7 is 14. 1 plus 4 is 5. Plus 8 is 13. And 1 plus 1 is 2. So do not forget about your four times you have to move your decimal into your number. So we want to move it in 1, 2, 3, 4. So your answer should be the grass will grow 23.43 23.4375 inches, right? Yeah, inches. Okay, so copy that down if you did not do it while I was doing the problem, and that's totally fine. I feel like that's how I would do it, copying down all at the end and actually watch me do it. So we have one more problem to go, and this one I want you to try on your own. I want you to do this one on your own, and then... You can come back after pausing the video and actually watch me go through it just to make sure you're doing it right. So pause right now and do it on your own. Okay, so hopefully you paused it and you came back with an answer. So let's see if you are correct. I'm going to put 15.5 on the top and 2.4 on the bottom since the 15.5 is the longer number, not necessarily larger. So take my decimals out. Whoop, once, whoop, once, add them together is 2. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 5 is 20 plus 2, 22. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. Cross off my 4, cross off my carries. Add my placeholder 0. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1 is 11. 2 times 1 is 1, plus 1 is 3. Add 0, 2, 7, 3. And decimal in twice, once, twice. We can knock off the 0 at the end. So, Rico, what distance? Um, biked, 37... Oh, that's not 37. Point 
miles. Okay, so that is your actual lesson for the day. Hopefully you took down all the notes because that is the best way to learn math. So practice for today. On page 122 in your textbook, these are all of the problems that you're doing. So if you want to pause, open up the page and circle them. So it is just multiplication. Um, all of these should be done in your math notebook. So open up a brand new page. So like, let's pretend that this is your notebook page. A lot of students in class I've noticed don't really know how to do work. So I'm just going to show you very quickly. So if I'm starting with number three, I would put a little three in the corner and do all my work right here. Once I'm done and I have the answer, I'm going to put the answer on the line. And then on my notebook page, I'm going to box that problem after I'm done it. And then I can do four right underneath of it. If you prefer, you could always do like four next to it as well. But then so you do the work for four. After you're finished, you box it and then do five. Okay, so that's how your work should look in your notebook to maximize all of the paper because we're trying to save some paper and save some trees because you're going to be doing tons of problems for me this year. So doing a three through 12 in your book on page 122, the answer key will be there for you to check with after you are done. And then don't forget your homework on formative. I will talk to you tomorrow about more multiplying decimal practice, but I'm